welcome to our third episode this season, and uh, we're focusing on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. today. Yes. So we've got a lot of great stuff cooking. My name is Bob Benson, hosting tonight. Chef Larchet is our chief chef. He's going to give the instructions. His under chef study is Emily Graham. So welcome back. Are you guys ready for this exciting uh, oh, Thanksgiving? Oh, yes, we're excited. It's Thanksgiving. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm yes. so excited. We can't wait. We have a lot to do. <laughs> Snowflakes uh, kind of added to the <laughs> ambience around here today as we are driving in. So that tells us that uh, the holiday seasons are on the rise. So what we got cooking tonight, it sounds like you got portobello wellington, you got some cranberry sauce, and it sounds like you got some roasted fingerling potatoes. Yes. What can you tell us about that before we get started? Okay, so uh, the basically it's a Thanksgiving, you know, it's Thanksgiving it's a traditional turkey, but today we have portobello wellington. It's a, it's a good Thanksgiving meal, and, and uh, also with the fingerling potatoes, I think it's... it's it's original, but it's, it's, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. huh? And uh, also the side of cranberry next to it and the cheesecake. We are like an uh, amazing cheesecake in Mini coming. Oh, huh? It's a uh, <laughs> pumpkin cheesecake. Yes, it's, I it's can wait to see this cheesecake. one. Yes. Okay, that sounds, sounds yeah. really yeah. good. Cheesecake. So what we'll do is we'll have prayer first and then the chef will start showing us how to prepare things and then we'll, the program will roll it out from there. So let's prepare our head. Mm. Father, we are so thankful for this season of Thanksgiving. Uh, it's a wonderful time of year as we contemplate all the blessings you've given to us. Mm -hmm. And one of those blessings is taste buds and foods and scents and smells and aromas. And as we uh, learn tonight uh, how to take care of our body temples by healthy cooking, just bless us with uh, abilities to grasp and to be able to du duplicate this at home that our families can enjoy and we can have great Thanksgiving together. So we just ask your blessing and your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. The Lord is with us. Let's do this. We have a lot to, <laughs> to do today, a lot to c cover. It's okay. like, how many, how many items do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it's a lot. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. Let's okay, do it. Let's start, let's start with the cranberry first. Okay. So we're going to start out uh, the cranberry. This is fresh cranberry. We we bought for this purpose and uh, I like the fresh cranberry many times we see cranberry have something some bad pieces there so you have to be careful uh, we, it's pre-washed already so if it do this anything more is it okay does it look good yeah it looks great I think you okay got I it found all. just a bad one that's it okay I mean that's okay, right? Do you like cranberry sauce? Do you like cranberry jam uh, from the store? Do you like? Do you like? Like the canned stuff? No, the canned stuff. No, no <laughs> it's it's full of sugar and there is <laughs> like there is no much flavor in mm. it and it's just like it can't taste can. Okay, mm. so this is fresh and it's inviting. I always make my own fresh cam uh, my cranberry sauce from Thanksgiving and I hope okay. all of you are going to start doing this, and uh, I hope Emily also. So first, first Thank orange you. orange juice. Okay. It's a fresh squeeze of orange juice, so we want to take a curve from that. A curve from here, you can put it a there. Cup? Yes. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's really just incredible. Good. Fresh squeeze, a nice. Okay, just put it there. And uh, I have like a star anise. I know most people don't use star anise for their cranberry sauce, but I'm I'm original like this, so I like. <laughs> so okay, so put one of this, and just also the whole thing? yeah, the whole thing. Isn't that so pretty? It yes. already feels like the holidays. With the you see star. the seeds and everything. Very yeah, shiny. yeah, it's really really nice. So pretty. And the, okay. sm the smell is incredible. I have one. You can, sm yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, it kind of smells like. Licorice. Yeah, licorice. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Yes. And then we're going to take uh, cinnamon. Ooh, you can favorite. just put it there. Kay. I like to grate some also. Mm. You can put the whole things. Oh, but wait. Yeah, yes. You did oh. the right thing. No, no. <laughs> okay. you did. But I like, I, like, I like to grate some. So you can put a little bit there also okay. into it. Okay. Right, very good. And lime. Lime is my favorite. Lemon or lime? What do you say have the most flavor? Um, lime probably. Yes. <laughs> oh, the flavor of lime. In, in the Caribbean, we use, and even Europe also, we use a lot of lime. Yeah. Lime is more, more for, we use a lot of the juice for the lemon, but to find flavors, we use the zest of the lime. Okay. okay? Yeah. So, really yes, good. you're doing well. <laughs> how much do you think, how much do you normally put in here? Mm. Yeah, like it's enough? fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to take some line and, and the zest, and you want to rotate around it so it doesn't take the white part so it gets bitter. Okay, so just keep rotating. Okay, so once that's. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just this like, is like the oatmeal we made last month. Yes, exactly. So yes, you do remember that. That's awesome. Got yes. That <laughs> okay, I think that's, that's pretty much that good. <laughs> yes. But you can put more if no, you want. No, it's good. I wasn't paying attention. I was okay. thinking about the oatmeal. So <laughs> now, let's see. Um, Okay, now the lime, the lemon, um, orange zest. 
So we're going to take this orange zest. Let me peel it quickly for you. Mm -hmm. Go and bring it into onto the, uh, the on the stove. Okay. I like to steam it a little bit to uh, for the flavor to come together. But before we do this, uh, let's put the sugar. Um, I have some uh, brown um, sugar cane, uh, raw sugar. It's on the bottom there, I think. Oh, I see you, Emily. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. okay. The sugar is here. <laughs> okay, so you can and uh, well, uh, put one cup of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Remember, the cranberry is very, uh, very citrus, very acidic. So we want to make sure. Okay, okay so I put the, you see this, huh? so I put uh, the lemon. Uh, orange le zest? Uh, lemon? Uh, mm, no, not orange zest. This is what? Orange peel? Orange peel, yes. Okay, go ahead. So one cup? Okay. Yes. Okay. And we're going to put a pinch of uh, salt just to balance the, the sweetener. Sweet. Cool. Um, okay. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I like. You get so thirsty after eating ice cream, right? Yes. <laughs> sometimes, you know what I like to put? I like to put some sage, a little bit of sage. Sage? Okay. Okay, this is sage for my garden. You see, this is for my garden. So we're going to use like just, just. Uh, it's not on the, it's not on the recipe, but no, well, it's okay. Do you okay. Have like a or uh, uh, sage, uh, sage, sage. I have like a big thing of sage. Uh, it's like a big. It's like covering a quarter of my garden. Oh. It's it's really really uh, yeah. So you go ahead, put it there, okay. and uh, let's simmer. Yeah. Yeah, I love sage. Sage, sage and uh, oregano and rosemary are my favorite herbs. Now you want to stir it. Uh, I have it here. You can use that. Then after, after about for for few, let's say about two, three minutes, when it starts to simmer a little bit, we're going to add this. And when you hear something like, how do you know it's ready? When you hear the sound of the cranberry popping. Oh. Okay. Okay, pop, pop, pop. Okay. It will take about eight to ten minutes. Okay, okay. And, and and simmer, and uh, it's nice. It's nice to stir it from time to time. You see this? It you can bring like it. Bring, yeah, yes. <laughs> the smell already come come up there. It's awesome. Do you ever simmer just stuff like this on the stove for? Aroma for just for flavor, mm -hmm. uh, just for aroma. I, I have a actually. I have like a how do you call this? Uh, a diffuser so I like to put uh, okay. cinnamon pumpkins like this and whatever yes so okay go ahead go ahead put it in okay. you think it's yeah go ahead for the time sake for time sake let's put it in okay just put the whole size yes and so you like to do this you like to put a uh, and a skillet and everything in at home yeah. to bring some sauce uh, what I like is garlic, garlic and onions. Garlic <laughs> and oh wow, in restaurants this is what we do. We put some garlic there on the skillet so customer can, can know we're cooking and they can come. Yes. Okay, sounds good. I will use this uh, spatula instead this time. Yeah. See that's it. You see what happened? <laughs> if you use a whisk, what will happen? <laughs> okay, so. Yes. Okay, so we can uh, from time to time you look look uh, into it from that time, okay? Yeah. So from now, right now we're going to start the next one, the fingerling potatoes. Okay, uh, this is actually from uh, Scott Cheddar Garden. Oh, thank, <laughs> <you>. <laughs> thank you, Scott. <laughs> and and this is incredible. I tried; it's so good. This this uh, this fingerling. So we're going to put it olive oil inside. Uh, this is olive oil here. Yeah? And now uh, I'm going to chop some, give you some sage. You go ahead, put some, uh, just drizzle some. Okay. Just, just go ahead, okay. like this. Yeah. And uh, some fresh sage here, just like that. And uh, I'll let you toast it. Um, ah, go ahead, take some uh, rosemary. Mm. Yeah. Th yes, this one. We're not going to chop it, you're just going to. This is good, huh? <laughs> you like herbs. Okay. Just yeah. like this, you see this? Yeah, okay. It. Yeah, just breaking it. And do the same thing with thyme, okay. fresh thyme. Just, just break breaking it. Yes. It? No. Okay. okay. Oh you, you can use a knife if oh. you want to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have some oregano. I don't know if the oregano will do well with high heat, but anyway, let's let's put it in oregano. Ah, it's fine. Okay. 
yeah. How much time? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Oh. Yeah. That's oh, good. Okay. Actually, that no, that's good. All right, cool. uh, we can put a little bit. Put two or three spring. Yeah, that's it. Right. And okay, go ahead. Put some salt. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah, go ahead. More. Yeah, put more. Yes, that's awesome. Look at this. Yes. Now, um, stir it well. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's that's great. I like to put some garlic also, but the garlic I don't have a fresh one. I have a puree, so forget the garlic now. So, uh, smoked paprika. Put a pinch of smoked paprika. Yes. Yes, yeah, stir it. Yes. Go ahead, use your hand. Yes. Okay. That's the best way to go. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's so Mediterranean. That's so inviting. Huh? Look at this. Actually, yeah, it's very relaxing. Yes. <laughs> oh, so happy. Okay. okay. Awesome. Now we have a good time relaxing. Now let's put it there. Look at this. Incredible. So. That's that's a picture there. I wish I had my camera. I can take a picture there. Okay, here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Put in the oven now. This oven there. In the bottom probably. The bottom yeah, most cook us. You see, uh, it's okay. Um, if you can bring the camera close, and you can see this here. Mm. You see, it's bubbling. You see, this is what we want, and um, it's uh, you want to leave some pieces not not uh, broken. You want to uh. Not all all the cranberry should pop up, so you can you can uh, for design purposes. But um, let's cook it longer. Okay, you take okay. about ten minutes. Okay, so now the next things is prepare the crust for the cheesecake. Okay, this is graham crackers. Could you tell what you did? What you did for that? Oh yeah, so for the graham crackers, um, well we just use a food processor. Yes. And so we just put the cheese in there. And so there were what four packets of graham crackers. Yeah, four packets. Okay. Yes, yeah. it might so be it's way too much, much, but. <laughs> yes. We'll make more. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. Not. And we, uh, grand crackers. You can, yeah. It's so we use it for the cheesecake. Okay. So you're going to take about four cups, four cups of this, of grand crackers. Find a bowl. Put in the bowl. Four cups. Oh. Yeah, the bowl is not bad. And we're going to take about a tablespoon. I have. I want to. Okay, two tablespoons of that. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good. Oh, okay, she have a half cup. It seems like it's a lot, but it's just four cups. Okay. Eight cups. Okay. So now uh, the butter. I um, put the butter to melt down there. And oh, when it melts the butter, we're going to pour it into this. For now, you can put some cinnamon, pumpkin. Uh, ah, yeah, I have like pumpkin spice. You can put a little bit, like a mm, few pinches. Yeah, few pinches. I'm uh, stirring this here in the meantime. You can put as much as you want, Emily. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's it. That's Wait, good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why. <laughs> ah, you saucy. You like spices. Uh, that's good, though. That's ah, yeah, this is the holiday, yeah. So, okay, go ahead. You okay. can put everything inside there. And then I will grate, grate some fresh cinnamon. You never can go wrong with fresh cinnamon, huh? Okay, and now stir it. Ah, this is a, a good course for our cheesecake later on, and we're going to pre-bake this course uh, just for five minutes, okay. just to bring uh, so it can be uh, nice, crusty, and so when you put uh, the cheesecake batter, it will not get soggy. Okay, so we want to really uh, bake it, uh, press it down very well here, and uh, that's it. Beautiful. That looks good. That's good. You can use your hand if you want. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm. You feel comforting, huh? <laughs> After a stressful day, this is a perfect size. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you like cheesecake? I do. Yeah. I don't like the plain kind of 
Yes. Yeah. So okay. So I'm you're excited about this one? Yes. Yeah. And you can use the uh, Oreo's uh, quest also. If you can take the Oreo, you can grind it and you can mix it the same thing. That's really is good. Yes. Yes. You can. And uh, okay. Go ahead now. Put it in. Let me bring it closer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. This is a spring form, so after the cheesecake, uh, <laughs> I cannot do it. Uh, it probably is way too much. Let's take some because there will be not enough for the filling. <laughs> okay. I was I was talk about that. Yeah. I'm so the, the spring form, you <laughs> see, the spring form is incredible because you can open this after this and, uh, and then, yeah, that's good. Okay. So now you, want you can use that to fly it up around. Just press it down. Okay. Yeah. Make sure it's pressed really, really strong. Yeah, go ahead. That's awesome. So you, you do the same thing, a spring foam, if you don't have a spring foam, you can use uh, just a uh, normal regular apple pie. Uh, apple, um, sorry, I say apple pie, uh, cross pen, uh, pie pen. Yes, you can use the same thing. And, uh, and that's it, yeah. But I like the free spring foam because I will show you after the reason why. It's like when you, when you pen this thing and you can see the side very well and uh, it's just, yeah, you're doing well. <laughs> okay. Is that okay. Yeah, perfect. Now let's. Oh! Okay, it's perfect. <laughs> okay, keep going. Yeah. And then put it in the oven for five minutes. I wish we have a timer so we can time everything for us. Huh, Emily? What do you think? We should have a timer from now on. Yeah, okay. Here? Yeah, five minutes. Because we're doing so many things, I'm afraid we forget those things. Okay, I think, uh, would you c come see the consistency of this uh, beer? Oh, it's really good. It's kind of foamy. Yes. Because there's so whole Yes, it's, yeah, so we can leave it uh, for a little longer. Okay. You see the cinnamon stick and the orange zest, all those things, okay? Okay, perfect. Okay, we have a timer for it, so I feel good about this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all this work and burn, and we have to do it again. Okay, so, okay, the duck cell. Now the duck cell. Uh, the mushrooms, go ahead. Uh, so we have a uh, white bottom mushroom, yes, this one. Okay. And you're going to cut some of them and we're going to put in the food processor. Okay. The, a duke cell, what is a duke cell? A duke cell is a French word. It's uh, from, uh, uh, there is a town called, uh, from this lady, it was created from, uh, for uh, a princess, uh, Mrs. Duke cell. And, and so uh, it's a mix of mushrooms and shallot and onions and, and uh, subtle flavor. Like sh uh, usually you use shallot and uh, uh, thyme or uh, rosemary. And okay. yeah, it's and you can use it for uh, actually for uh, you know, except for if you do omelette, you can put it in some omelette or you can use it for actually for uh, ravioli, stuffing with ravioli also. Yeah, yeah. It's really great. So today we're going to do it for the portabella, okay? Okay. okay so we, what the duck cell, go ahead, cut it. The duck cell is important uh, to realize that we have to take all the moisture out. It's so important. So we're going to cook it down very well to take all the moisture out. So we put it over the portabella. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Put in the food processor there. Um, She's a master of the food processor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> She's under pressure. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to chop the shallot at the same time. Shallot is uh, the onion family. It's, it's more subtle in flavor, but have more depth, depth of flavor. For our sauce, we use it for sauce a lot in, in Europe. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. And you want pearls it, you can, ah, uh, um, sorry. Oh, I messed fine. up now, okay. Mm. Do like this, okay? Pulse okay. it. So you can use onions if you like, but um, uh, really the shallot give a, a better, way better flavor uh, than the onions. And you will see. Try for yourself and let me know what you think. Okay? Sorry. Accident. 
How, how does it look like? It's, it's almost done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay okay that's fine that should be fine okay that's perfect okay. it cannot be more perfect than this uh, yes right. Emily. awesome <laughs> there's still a couple whole ones but i think we're good yeah it's fine all right okay so uh let's go ahead and uh i have the skillet on but before we put in the skillet we need to put some uh olive oil a little just a little bit of olive oil here Yes, on the yes. And I'm going to give you some some of the shallots. Kay. You can you can go ahead and cut some here. Just dice it like the onion. Who we do for the onions? Did you already cut it the other way? Yes, I did. Thank yes. you. <laughs> you mama this way. Wow, <laughs> awesome. No, this is <laughs> 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 I can't remember this. Every time we, I might we're going to learn how to cut an onion day. <laughs> yes. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm, and yeah. uh okay, <laughs> perfect. Go ahead and put it on the on the you chop it already? Wow, you just take this well, one. It, okay, thanks. Make it as fun thin as possible, okay? Okay. Okay, in a few minutes we're going to start uh, our um um Bible nuggets. Um but first we have to do all this process. It takes a little longer today. The reason why is Thanksgiving, yes. <laughs> 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 yes, that's giving. Ah, okay. If you are done, you can already put put yours in. Put in the skillet. Okay. Okay, I mine is I ready. I think I messed it up. No, but we're good. Okay, we're good. great. Ah, oh, the seasoning. Okay, the cranberry I think Emily is really nice. You see this? Oh, you I think the timer is going off. Yeah. Hang on, oh. I'm sorry. Ooh, the timer. The okay. Yeah, my timer. Yeah, let me take it. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Ooh, this is exactly this is what golden brown. This? Nice. Okay, that's awesome. So this is ready. We can just leave it there. Okay. Okay. The and uh, this is your. This, this is the cranberry. Cranberry sauce is, and we let it chill uh, for about. It's best to do it overnight so all the flavor develop. Okay, do it overnight is better. And uh, you have all the flavor together. Uh, if you don't have time to do it overnight, at least leave it at least three to four hours before you use it. If you don't have time, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So go ahead. Uh, put uh, put now. Um, put the put the mushroom in. Okay. The mushrooms. Yes. Okay, I'm going to pull this. Look at this mixture. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so beautiful. Wow, it's beautiful. So we're going to put it in the fridge and let it chill in the fridge, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. The, the last thing before the bubble nugget is the porta vela. Then we're going to start Okay, you okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, so ne next. How is it? Yes. So now the purpose is to make it sure that it dries up well. Okay, go ahead, put everything put in. Okay. And I'm going to. We're going to um, add some, some herbs in it. Okay? I'm going to chop some rosemary for you in the meantime. Okay, Mili? Yep. Okay, fresh rosemary. Okay, just like that. And the next things we're going to add is uh, fresh thyme and fresh sage also. The sage is optional. You don't, if you do not want to put sage, it's fine. But I think it goes well with. Okay. 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 Go ahead. And Emily, yeah. um, I'll show you something while while you do this. Yeah. Here, come see this. Okay. You can leave it on low. Put it just put it on low. 
Right. Wanna, okay? Yep. So you're going to take this out and you're going to take the gill out. It's very fragile, so you just take a spoon and just scrape this out, okay? Okay. Until you take the gear. The reason why I want to take it because when uh, when we cook it down, you give like a dark color, and it's 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 just not very pretty. Okay. So we take this out, okay? Just like that. You see? Mm -hmm. Just take the gear and you want to stuff. Sound good? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Thanks. It's so delicate. Yes. Ah, the, the flavor of mushroom. Do you like you, you like mushroom, don't you? Me? Yes. Yes. I oh, really. You take time really to say like yes. <laughs> I mean, they look gross, but they, <laughs> yes. they taste good. But it is good. Yes. I mean, they're pretty, but they look gross yes. to eat to me. I don't know. But yeah, I like them. There is a new study came out. They say mushroom is good for depressions. They say it's good for depression. Yes. Uh huh. Oh. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. So, uh, we eat a lot of mushroom. No, yeah, I absolutely. feel good, but <laughs> it's okay. I love that. Okay, so here, what I just put here, Emily, is just yeah. the rosemary and the the thyme. Oh, okay. And I'm going to put some garlic. Okay. Just mm. a little bit of garlic. It smells so good. Do you want to put the garlic yourself? You c I mean, that's good. I can scrape this one. Okay, so that sounds good. Yeah. Okay. I do love garlic. Yes, <laughs> I put a little bit good. of it, and then we're going to put a little bit of salt. Okay. And that's it. That's simple. So, s thyme, fresh thyme, rosemary, salt, and garlic. That's it. Okay. How much garlic did you put? Uh, garlic about. Uh, mm, I put a teaspoon. I oh. put a, about a teaspoon mm -hmm. of garlic. Um, yeah. It's the thing. Say four cloves of garlic, but this is like, you know, um, ladies and gentlemen. So what we do for our garlic, mm -hmm. uh, I blend it with oil. Okay. You see. And so I take a lot of, because I, I bought the prepared garlic, mm -hmm. so I, what I do, I just blend it into olive oil. So okay. I have it the whole time, so I don't have to keep crushing garlic, you know? Mm. So, so it's about four cloves on the recipe, so it's the value of four cloves because it's very concentrated. Okay. okay, put a little bit of salt, more salt, okay. just a few pinches there. Okay. And the last thing is we're going to put the portabella here. So you're going to take a little bit of uh, uh, the butter here. Okay. This is a vegan butter, so smart mm. balance. So go ahead, put some here. Okay, uh, into the skillet. Oh, there. Sorry. Make sure it's very hot. Okay. okay. So you, as you see, what Emily did. So she really went deep into this, but uh, it looked very <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> think I never, I never went so deep into this, but oh. it's great. It's How great. It's great. How much okay. butter do you want in here? Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's Just it. Yeah, a little bit more. Just. Yeah, and that's it. Okay, right, cool. So uh, what we're going to do? We're going to do the face ta uh, face down. I'll le leave it for five minutes into this into this here in, in the skillet, and okay. then yes, go ahead. We can do it like this. And uh, we're done. Uh, so it's time for our Bible nugget. Alright, so tonight we're going to talk a little bit about how health and spiritual things kind of fit together. So our spiritual min minute tonight, no. beliefs no, either add too. or detract from your health. Your beliefs either add or detract. For example, beliefs about your origins, your purpose in life, and what's going to happen beyond this life are really impactful for the quality of life. Um, so, for example, if you believe in evolution, you believe perhaps in the Big Bang as a start. Perhaps you also believe in not only the Big Bang, but you also believe in primordial slime. Eventually, you know, life happens and here comes the apes and then eventually we descend from that. So you really begin as an accident and you really have no purpose in life. And the challenge with that is that when you have... Uh, people who embrace that theory, you can see that uh, ultimately Frederick Nietzsche accepted the philosophy that, uh, of evolution. Let's he was an uh, atheist. And he, he, he said that the, the end result basically is a survival Five of the fittest. Then, then so the it's like dog eat dog and you climb on top of everybody else in order to cooking. survive. And we saw that in um, World War II when the Nazis uh, oh. genocided six million Jews. 
So that kind of philosophy doesn't yield a good result for the community of the world people that we are a part of. But if we go back to another one that talks about origins, we look at intelligent design or biblical creation. And we see that in Genesis 126 and 27, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Verse 28, so God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created male and female, he created them. So here we have a God who lovingly created human beings in his image after his likeness. Kind of like a a woman and a man coming together in marriage and having a child in their image and likeness. They have their DNA, as you might say. So God, when he created us, he creates not only to be physical beings, but mental beings and social beings and spiritual beings, that is, to have a relationship with him. We look at uh, Psalms 139, verse 14. It says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. So here we see the psalmist is praising God because our bodies are an absolute amazing scientific mechanism that God has created. The cool thing about it is if you're praising God for the things he's done in your life, you have a positive mindset, not a negative one. And that comes and brings about psychoneuroimmunology, PNI as they call it, psychoneuroimmunology. The text kind of says, as a man thinks is in his heart, so is he. If you're thinking positive thoughts, you're gonna have a strong immune system. You're gonna be more resistive to different kinds of viruses and different kinds of disease, different kinds of cancers. You'll, you'll fight them more effectively with a positive mindset as you're praising God and being thankful for the things that you have rather than looking at the glass half empty and the negative challenges you may be facing in life. So what are some of the lessons we can pull out of creation and how does it impact our health? Well, we look at Psalms 33, 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So here we see that God not only created humankind, but he also created the heavens by the word of his mouth. Can you imagine that? We got a, like, as we call a star breathing God. Leo Guglio, if you get a chance to go watch it, how big is our God or how great is our God on uh, YouTube, you can see an amazing production that he has done that kind of fleshes this out. Psalms 33 verse 9 goes on to say, For he spoke and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. So God spoke. Now, let's get an idea of just what he did. Um, Hebrews 11 verse 3 says, By faith we understand the rules were framed by the word of God. Just God speaking, he was able to frame worlds out there in our universe. And it goes on to say, so that the things which are seen were not made by things which are visible. So he spoke it, it existed. He created it out of nothing. That's the power of our God. Very amazing. So let's apply it. How powerful does God have to be to accomplish this feat? Speaking worlds into existence just by the power of his word. We just look at four uh, stars. The sun is a large star. It's 93 million miles away from us. Uh, It's about a million times the size of our earth. I like planet earth and it's fun to fly around the earth and see all the different places when you travel. But can you imagine the sun being one million times or roughly you can fit 960,000 Earths into one sun. That's how big it is. So if the golf ball represents the Earth, the sun would be a diameter of 15 feet. It's huge. 960,000 Earths would fit into one sun. That is gigantic. But God spoke it into existence by the breath of his mouth. Powerful. Beetlejuice. Quite a ways away, 427 light years away. But its size is fascinating. Its size is two times the orbit of the Earth around the sun. So there's the orbit, but can you imagine twice that size? Amazing. This is a huge, huge star. So the proportion, if the Earth was a golf ball, Betelgeuse would be the Empire State Building stacked up six Empire State Buildings high. The golf ball would be the Earth. Betelgeuse would be six Empire State Buildings high. That's how huge it is. The magnitude is incredible. So 262 trillion Earths, trillion Earths would fit into one Betelgeuse star. Isn't that amazing? It would be the size of the Superdome filled 3,000 times with golf balls. So the third star is Musifi. 
Musibi's 3,000 light years away. That's 3,000 light years of, uh, I'm trying to remember what the, the ratio is, something trillion light years, light miles per year is how fast light travels. But if the Earth is a golf ball compared to Musifi, then Musifi would be the length of two Golden Gate bridges end to end. The golf ball on one end and Musifi is so much bigger that 2.7 quadrillion Earths could fill Musifi. 2.7. Think about that. If a thousand is three zeros, a million is six, a billion is nine, a trillion is 12, uh, look at how many quadrillion would have as zeros behind it. Quite a few, quite a few. So that is how many Earths would fit into Musifi. And Musifi is not the largest. So let's go look at the largest. The largest is Canis Majoris. And it's, uh, if the Earth were a golf ball, then Canis Majoris, by proportionate size, would be the size of Mount Everest. Golf ball compared to Mount Everest. So what we're talking about is that uh, Mount Everest is six miles high, almost. Seven quadrillion Earths would fit inside of Canis Majoris. We're talking about huge things that are gigantic that we on Earth have no way of relating to them because they're so much larger than we are. And yet God spoke these into existence out of nothing by the power of his might through the power of his word. So what are some lessons that we can get from this God who speaks stars into existence? Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Obviously, if God has the power to speak big stars into existence out of nothing, whatever challenges you face in life, when you come to God, he can give you the strength. My God will supply all of your needs according to your riches and glory. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is there anything too hard for the Lord to do? Absolutely not. So what are the results of faith in this God? Well, instead of experiencing a man's heart failing them for fear, as the Bible talks about, and that's the state of the natural man, as they see all these things happening around us, their hearts are filled with fear. Instead of having that experience, God's people, the people of faith who trust in him, and this star-breathing God, benefit from this promise. Isaiah 26, 3, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So when, you're, when people's planes are going down, people of faith, they are at peace because they trust God. When, um, when people are facing life's crises, because of their faith in God, and that God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and that he'll be with us to the end, they are at peace. So the result is people who have faith in God, who attend religious services regularly, have stronger immune system. They found this out through, through uh, studies. Um, Dr. Koenig has found this out through studies, medical and scientific studies, um, that it boosts their immune system. Having faith in God, this powerful God, who's going to be with them all the way through this experience, boost their immune system so that they have increased abilities to fight against infection, risk of infection, autoimmune diseases, and certain kinds of cancer. And in conclusion, Koenig says, religious people are both physically healthier and later, later in life, and they also live longer. So is there a benefit to believing in God? Absolutely. You can have peace, whatever you face. Your blood pressure can be lowered. Your immune system can be stronger, and you will be blessed by doing so. And that's how spiritual health helps to impact and give longevity to physical health. So we turn it back over to Chef and Emily. I hope you are blessed. 
and now we continue for the next process. First, I want to we want to show you the portabella that Emily um, uh, uh, put on the skillet on a hot skillet, saute. And uh, w the reason why we put on the grill, Emily, is uh, to after it's cooked. You see how tender it is. This is what we want. Okay, it mm -hmm. took about eight minutes, huh? Mm -hmm. And so the, you see the sauce here. This is what's happening. So we want to drain it well because after we're going to put the crust on top mm -hmm. and you don't want the crust to be soggy, okay? So okay. therefore, uh, we want to put it on the grill so just to make sure it's drained very well. And also the duck cell. So the duck cell is incredible. I mean, you like it, huh? Yeah, it's really good. It's really, really good. So this is what we want. Uh, take all the moisture out. Make sure there is no more moisture because we're going to serve the portabella after and uh, we want uh, when we put a crust, we don't want any moisture into the crust. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, and we want to let it cool because also what happened the crust, the puff crust will will not do well. It do well only on cold, cold everything has to be cold. Okay, okay. so um, go ahead and um, so now immediately we show you the cheesecake. She's a master of this cheesecake. She's going to <laughs> she <laughs> she <laughs> okay. So we're going to put um, the silk and tofu. You can show them maybe saying Emily and just sure. keep going. Okay. While I'm doing something else, we're going to put two packs of the firm soap and tofu into the blender. And this cheesecake is, is incredible. Uh, I love the pumpkin cheesecake. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, and then we have one tofu cream cheese. Yeah, uh, the the ch the cream cheese we're using is the Morinu cream cheese, and we find it at Nature's Nest. Okay, at Nature's Nest. Uh, also, we have this the sour cream also, and also we find this at the Nature's Nest. The tofu, the silk cream tofu also. Okay. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think the tofu is Morinu, and the sour cream is tofuti. Yeah, tofuti and Morinu. Yeah. And you can use I use today the uh, the soft one. You can use extra uh, extra firm or firm. Is is. I don't think it matters much. Mm. It's probably a little bit more creamy, but uh, okay. the texture will be great still. Okay. okay. <coughs> so the nature nest, nature's nest. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about this store. Uh, we open from Sunday to Friday, and Sunday at uh, ten to two, uh, Monday to uh, Wednesday, uh, ten to five, and uh, Friday, uh, Thursday, ten to eight. Okay, and we close on Sabbath, uh, and f and uh, so what we w it's a helpful store. So we have all kind of items and products that people when they come to the stores they're excited. Not only is you find a lot of things that you you can you have mm -hmm. you you look for, but it's 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 homey. It's, it's a good feel. It, and it's it smells really good. Yes, inside. yes. <laughs> and we bake bread good. every Tuesday. We have fresh bread every yeah. Wednesday. We have tamales. Every Thursday we have pizza. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I love that pizza. Yes. I haven't tried the tamales yet, but oh yes, I, I, I need to, I need to change that. that. Okay. <laughs> so the the pumpkin. Oh, where are you now? The sugar. I, I need. Yeah. I need okay. A the sugar. Brown sugar. Yes. In the meantime, I'm going to put <coughs> that in the in the fridge. Okay. Yeah. So we're at the sugar here. We're going to use the same kind of sugar. Oops. I didn't quite get a full cup. Um, I'm checking the finger lean. Mm. Put and the pumpkin puree is the the mm. is the pure one. Okay. Okay. This is the finger lean. You see, you see this. This is like so rustic. Okay. So it's I think it's really ready. Good. Let me just. Let me just squish that. Yeah. yeah, it's ready. Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect, perfect. So we put it there. I'm just gonna put the whole thing in. Okay, that was a cup. Yes, as yeah. much as we could get. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the pumpkin, the 100% pumpkin puree. So this is what we use for today. Okay, she's going to put now some cinnamon stick, uh, some cinnamon, fresh cinnamon, <laughs> not the stick, but uh, uh, as much she can grate it. <laughs> my stars. I'm always afraid of like skinning my finger. Yes, that's that's the worst cut. <laughs> ah, it's it's it hurt for a while. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me help you for after this. What you need? I need the pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice, half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of pumpkin yes, spice. 
Okay, it's a quarter of a teaspoon I go into the two. Okay. okay. And the lime zest, I'll let you put this one, salt. I think that's enough. A yeah, it fresh. should be fine. Okay. Yeah, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Okay. And a tablespoon of vanilla. A tablespoon of vanilla, here. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Uh, put the cornstarch first so the, it won't oh, be dry. Yeah, yeah four okay, tablespoons. Yeah. Uh, four tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay. And then you put some lime. Then we're going to put it in the blender and it'll be like nice and creamy. We put it over the course that Emily just did for you. And then it will take about 35 to 40 minutes, okay? okay 35 cool. minutes, 30 to 35 minutes. And uh, that's, that's it. And then we g you're going to see the end of it, okay? Um, we made one, but with uh, uh, o Oreos. Every time I say... Uh, Oreos crust? Wait, uh, what? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oreo crust? Yeah. <gasps> really? Every time I tell you to say mm. Cheerio, I don't know, Oreo, Cheerio, it's like <laughs> almost the same. I mean, it's very close. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, the flavor won't be the same though. <laughs> 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 okay, some limes, there's a little bit. Add some lime and, and pumpkin goes well together, so okay. why not? Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I love this. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So mm. I, hope, uh, I hope everyone um, will actually do one of those meals. For Thanksgiving, all the portabella, Wellington, all the cheesecake, all the gravy, something, huh? Mm. That'd be great. And show us, give us some pictures, send us some pictures, and tell us how you went, and uh, we'd be happy to, to, to hear something from you. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I think we have everything. Yes. Okay. Is there anything? Here we go. This one is a little different than mine at home. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, is it at the right setting? Seven? Yes. You're good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, we succeed. Okay, so. Yeah, is, what happened? It's oh, tough? I just, just, no, I'm just checking okay. it. No, I just, I oh, good. hold on. Let me huh? give you a. Uh, is there something to like. Yeah. Yeah. On the side. That, yeah. Yes, thank you. I thought the engine, sometimes when it went too long, it just yeah. it just stopped. So I thought it was what just happened. Oh I said, no. I don't <laughs> No, it's hard to see, and I couldn't tell if yeah. it was like yeah, the size. Fine. Yeah, yes. we're good. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> I don't know how to look this one. Yeah, it looks wow, good. Wow, it looks really, oh, whoops. All right. Looks Sorry. really good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, on it? Yeah. Yeah. It look, it look, it look amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, one more, one more stir and that's it. Yep. Okay, Very one more good. stir everybody. And then we're going to start. We'll do this after. Make sure you have the top on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that should be fine. Very good. Wonderful. Let me put there. Okay, yeah. let's do it. Oh, you want to taste it? Yes. I, I always <laughs> like to taste. Uh, there is some. I think there is some spoon there. Um, Let me give you one. Oh yeah, yeah there's one left in here. You want to taste some? it too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. perfect. Here's for the. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. Whoa. Good. Of course, you, you taste the cornstarch a little bit, but when you cook, it'll be great. It'll cook it out, yeah. It's not too sweet mm. also. It's not mm. overpowering. Mm. It's not too sweet. I think it's so great. so good. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So we're going to pour this thing in just okay. like this. See that? Okay, I'll let you do it. Maybe. <laughs> you want to do it? It's okay, go okay. for it. I can. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. When you sing and when you are happy when you cook, uh -huh. good thing happening to the food at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you make people, when they eat, they make them smile. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. I love that song too. Jesus is beautiful. Yeah, Jesus is beautiful. <laughs> okay, so let's put in this uh, uh, 
first I need to put a 350, so I will hold on a little bit before we put a 350, okay? okay? So we're going to bake it in a 350, and by the way, the finger list was at 500 degrees, and this is will be 350, okay? Uh, the oven has, was at 500, so we're going to wait for a little bit before we put it in the oven. Okay. Okay, so now let's start the, the sauce. So this year, this sauce will be for the for the main dish for the Portabella Wellington. So it's the mushroom sauce. Okay. Okay. So we need some shallots for this. There is just take one of it, one okay. shallot. The it, it it asks for two, but this is a big shallot, so it should be fine. Okay. In, and now, uh, so go ahead. You can dust it. No, you just do it like you okay. just wipe a little bit around there. Yeah. Just do it like a. Uh, uh, the last one, dice. Okay. Okay. You don't want cinnamon in the sa the shallots. Yes. <laughs> well. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. So now I'm going to take. I do the mushroom in the meantime. Okay. So we're going to take about uh, uh, the baby, the baby Bella uh, mushroom. You can use white mushroom also. I, I just like this one. The flavor is stronger, and I really. Like portabella mushroom for this, uh, the bibella mushroom for this, mm. this sauce. So as soon as you're done, you can put uh, about two tablespoons of, of, uh, of balance and uh, melt it down. Balance. Then you put, um, you put your things there after that. You put your shallots, okay. and after your shallots, you're going to add uh, the mushrooms. Awesome. Wow, you're getting good. You you really, really excel at cutting the shallots, the onions. This is so encouraging. <laughs> <I don't laughs> no, it's really, really awesome. Uh. Okay, so I'm using about about seven mushrooms for this. Seven, okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. Okay, this is on the skillet, so go ahead and put your butter in. And the butter is uh, <laughs> about two tablespoons. <laughs> okay. And it's a who, okay, R U X. A who is a blend of butter and flour. Okay. And then um, we're going to use this milk for it. This is a soy original. I love this, this one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very low in sugar and really does good gravy for the good sauce. Mm. Okay. So this is the one we're going to use. Awesome. Okay, go ahead. You can put the shallot inside. And okay. then, okay, great, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. And I, I've you can go so ahead and put uh, also the mushrooms right away. Okay. This ready. Thank you. And I give it to stir. I hope you have fun. This kitchen smells so great. <laughs> it's like it Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's like a holiday. I'm so excited. And, and we are hungry. After that, we're going to feast. Huh? <laughs> so, okay. So, right. go ahead. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Stir this. Thanks. And we have some nutmeg. I didn't see this nutmeg there. The nutmeg is so what anyway. Yes. Yeah. For. I'm going to we're going to add a little bit a dash of nutmeg. I have some fresh nutmeg here. Just a little bit of nutmeg. I really like the uh, fresh nutmeg. Nutmeg, nutmeg in uh, uh, powdered already when you sell them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's here, yeah. Take this one in me. Oh. Smell. Oh yeah. It's incredible. It's like. <sighs> it's like it tastes like the holidays. It smells like the holidays. <laughs> it's yeah, mm. it's awesome. Okay, so now um, when it's salty enough, you're going, you're going to add the flour in. Okay, and uh, when it's tender enough. Okay, when okay. it's tender, okay. about one to two minutes, and okay. then we're going to put the flour. In the meantime, while we're waiting for this, why don't we make the Wellington? I think we have everything for it already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we have the mushrooms. I'm going to use this. This this is for the final to trade them. Okay? okay, I'll give you two. I'll take one here, and let me go ahead and take our mixture. 
our mixture is here. Mm. Okay, you are coming, you are coming. <laughs> I don't know why it took so long. Okay. Away from the camera. Sorry guys, see here. We are here. <laughs> don't worry. Okay, the fridge is still open, so I need to go back. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Alright, so this is okay. what we made earlier. And it's it's pretty dry. Yeah, this is nicely. Now, what we want to do, I'm going to put about cream cheese, a little bit of the cream cheese, like about a tablespoon in it. Oh, okay. And you go in here. Um, I don't know if we can fit everything in this. But in the bowl? Yeah, it's pretty full. Maybe we another it one. We can put in the skillet. Oh, perfect. Okay, just a tablespoon. Okay. Just to give it some creaminess to uh, a nice uh, earthy flavor in it, okay? Okay. Now you can go and stir it to use this. Oh, you can use yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. good. Yes. I'm washing your gravy at the same time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, as soon as you incorporate, now you can, uh, um, this is ready, mm. let me show. This is the way you want it, tender, you see the mushroom in, this is what we want. Beautiful. Tender, the, onion, the shallot is tender already, the mushroom is, um, is nice, uh, not much water in, so this is what we want, okay? Mm. So, um, beautiful. Do you want to it's give it a taste? You tasted already. No, we didn't taste that before. Yeah, you no, tasted it before, this but was so good. Yeah, okay. but not with the green, the cream okay. cheese. Go for it. Okay. Mm, tastes really nice. I <laughs> put a pinch, a little bit of pinch of salt. Okay. And a little bit of nutmeg. Okay, that's it. And then we ready. Okay. Okay, this is ready for your flour, Emily. Okay. So you put two tablespoons of flour inside. All right. Um. So we're doing the gravy right now. We're doing two things at the same time. We're doing the gravy and then we're doing also the portabilla wellington. The flour is uh, here in this thing. Oh okay. okay. All right. Well, I'm going to use... Yes. I'm going to use this you teaspoon. You can use that one. It's is fine. that okay? Yeah, let me wipe it up okay. for you. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> okay, go ahead. All right, so how many? Three? Two, ta two? two, uh, two tablespoons. Two yes. Okay. And flour needs to be cooked, so about one minute after you put it in. Yeah. Let's throw it for one minute. Then after this, okay. we can add your, f uh, your milk. And um, I'm going to chop some rosemary in the meantime. <laughs> so what do you plan for Thanksgiving, Emily? What, what kind of meal are, are you uh, planning to do for Thanksgiving? I don't know. I mean, this looks really good. Oh, um, okay. I was, I was thinking about doing something non-traditional this year. Okay, perfect. I'm hosting, and I thought, you know what? You know, sometimes Christmas and Thanksgiving, it's kind of the yeah, same kind of meal. Yes, yes, that's true. I mean, true. but this is this is different. This is special. So yeah. I like this. Last year we did Asian. Last year, I believe. Oh, Indian, did you? Indian or Asian? Yes. Oh, it that's was, so cool. It was ah, uh, we yeah, we loved. Um, to make sense giving non-traditional so <laughs> so we did uh indian and it yeah. was great it, it, we make like a uh, korma uh indian rice oh and we man. make a uh, uh, ch um chickpea mas uh, chickpea masala, uh, masala. yeah okay so okay go ahead this Kay. like this all right uh this is rosemary and th and fresh thyme mm. okay so the flour is cooked already so go ahead and put two cups of milk Two cups of this. Okay. Ah, uh, one cup and a half, not two cups. Oh, okay. A cup and a half. Alright, very good. Burning. Burning it. There we go. Okay, and we want to stir it to make sure it doesn't get lumpy. So stir it. I have a whisk there, I can't find it. Oh, uh, well, there is a. Yeah, here. Um, yeah, this one. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's so better. So we uh, so uh, in inside the, the fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, the uh, soy milk, the flour, the vegan butter, and the portabella. So we have everything and salt to taste. Let's put a little bit of salt. Okay. Nice. Oh, it's 
smells so good. It has it. This mm -hmm. is yeah. This is really the consistency is coming. It's getting thicker, so mm -hmm. that's really really nice. It is thickening a bit. Awesome, beautiful, beautiful. So the last, the last thing we're going to do is finish the portabella, then we put in the oven. Oh, let's put a cheesecake in the oven already. I think the temperature went down already. Always, I'm always afraid that open. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it happened to <laughs> yeah, me one, one time. It happened to me one time. The whole thing fell. Oh no! It was, uh, it was sad story. <laughs> anyway. That's awful. I leave. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <coughs> uh, okay. So how does it come up? Nice. Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's getting thicker. Should probably okay. stop stirring it it quite taste. so much. Oh. Oh, beautiful. The consistency, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Mm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Really good. Really, really mm. great. Huh? Wow. This is good, huh? I really like that. <laughs> this is good. That's so okay, good. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. okay. I want to show you the consistency of this. This is a, a nice mushroom. You can blend it if you want, but I will not blend it my, myself. Just leave it this way. And um, it's, it's creamy. It's mm -hmm. The flavor is just light. With the fresh herbs inside, you can go on with that. Okay? Yeah, so it's really it's good. Okay, so now let's, let's, let's do this. Okay, yeah, so I've been curious about this all night i've never done this <laughs> okay <laughs> we're going to satisfy your curiosity okay okay so now we're going to put this inside go ahead put one inside like that is it like heaping yes yeah, so you can put as much you can <laughs> okay yes and so then good. and this is like we put like two um 16 ounce of uh, mushroom but you, you see you can you can use way more portabella this is a lot of filling still mm -hmm. we have here so you can do at least w if you want to uh, about it will do about 12 12 portabella at least okay or i these. would say ten, yeah 10 to 12 portabella yeah. for this amount okay okay so cool i i like to put a little bit of spinach hmm. uh it's the spinach is just for uh just for the color when you cut it you can see through just something extra okay so let me take this out. Okay. We're going to use. Oh, I should put it to you instead. Okay, we're going to use the puff, the puff course now. Okay. Here. Okay. So you can find that in your in your local grocery store. This puff course. Okay. It's uh, I, I will I will um, def uh, we defrost it the day before into the refrigerator, and uh, before you use it, it's, it comes frozen. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So you what you want to do is just like this. Just position your things. I will. Just one straight cut. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, and I will. This is a small mushroom, so we can one straight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will give you this one. You can put it for this. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So you ready? So uh, now we, we so. just 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 wait, wait, like this. So you can do it the way you. you okay, you so it's like this. As long as you cover you the whole <laughs> things. Okay. Oh, as long as it's all yeah. covered? And then after we turn it upside down. Wait, how did... <laughs> yes, you're doing perfect. How did you do this other no. side? <laughs> okay, yeah, fold. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Because like not going to be... It won't... <laughs> just you <laughs> can pull it a little inside. bit, pull it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I think it's good. I mean... Yours is... Oh, you turned yours over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, why? Yes, yes, is so you beautiful. Turn it upside down, <laughs> just like okay. that. All right. How did... Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Do the other one. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. And here I'm going to put some milk. The milk is uh oh I don't know this. Oh that one was easier. Okay. Okay, we're going to put the milk if you want to put uh 
uh, egg yolk, you can, but uh, we'll put some milk. The milk will do exactly the same. Give so you it just a nice use the plain? Yeah, the this? plain milk, yes. Okay, cool. And I like to do some design on top, like this. Ooh. Usually, I like to let it um, put in the fridge first, but for lack of time. So, I just do something like that. That's fancy. Okay, just like that. Mm -hmm. You want to try? Go ahead. Sure. Take the tip of the knife like this. Okay. And just go. If you use this like this, you don't have enough. You won't. You won't be precise enough. Okay. So you want to start. I finish this one. I let you do the other one. Okay. Okay. okay go ahead. Thanks. And then we're going to put in the fridge just to firm, because of course, like cold. As much cold it is, sometimes I put in the freezer for uh, thirty minutes or in the fridge for. Uh, an hour but you don't have to leave it that long but you need a, a, a nice cold um, chill uh, it does better when uh, to rise okay beautiful that's so fun yes beautiful. okay okay <laughs> i put it in the fridge just like this okay and then i come back he's, he's <laughs> okay so yeah. we put everything in the fridge so we're done for now and okay. uh, so after we come back, we're going to show them everything that has been baked. Oh, okay? I'm so excited. And I think it will be excellent, excellent. Okay. See you soon. And uh, I can't wait to show you the last final event. Cheesecake is working right, so well already. Medical minute here, and I'll go back to the start. Yes, thank you. We are missing uh, Nadine Larche tonight. She will not be presenting. She's working on a project tonight, so I'm standing in. Not near as beautiful or as wise, but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, I'm plugging the hole. So, all right, so we're going to talk about principles of health. Um, so there's some underlying factors that have caused death in the United States. I'm taking largely from uh, the book Proof Positive by Neil Nedling. You can find that online. It's a great book how to reliably combat disease and achieve optimal health through nutrition and lifestyle. So over there, look at the underlying cause factors and from research. And you can see there that in the 1980s, poor diet and adequate exercise was a number one killer. Uh, that those they, Americans did not have that in their lifestyle. Tobacco was a number two killer. Alcohol related to the third cause of death. And you can see the infectious diseases all the way down here, motor vehicle accidents, sexual behavior, obviously AIDS begin to kick in and so forth. So these are the causes, underlying causes of death in our country. Uh, and, and they lead to these afflictions, these ten, top 10 leading afflictions, heart and blood disease. Heart disease still number one killer in the United States of America. Um, cancer, number two. Chronic lung disease, uh, related to smoking, obviously. Uh, accidents, and you can see on down, uh, suicide, cirrhosis, and kidney, etc. So let's break it down a little bit further. What can we do to combat these things? You know, it's one thing to know that we have the issues. Another thing is like, how are we going to address it? How are we going to fight it? So nutrition is going to be important. So we'll talk about that at another time. Tonight's not our main intent is to talk about that, but to look at the factors and how they interrelate and how we need to be careful each of these factors are part of our life. Exercise is important. Uh, water, plenty of water. You're talking uh, six to eight glasses. Usually half your body weight in ounces is what they recommend. Sunshine, temperance. You're going to notice a little acronym coming down here on the left. It says like N-E-W, new start is where we're headed. New start. If you want a new start in life, put these into your lifestyle. Fresh air, get outside of the factory cities uh, where large air pollution can occur at times. Uh, get rest. Rest is going to be really important. We're going to find that out as we look at a little study a little bit more. Trust in God. We already talked about how trust in God can positively affect your immune system and help you fight uh, disease. So let's look at these a little bit more. Seven studies. Now, uh, Dr. Breslow, Dr. Bellick did a uh, what is called a classic Alameda study, Alameda County. California, it's a little island there in, uh, in the East Bay. Um, they had about 6,000 uh, participants in this study that they followed for a period of 20 years as they looked at these seven factors. And they wanted to see if they could measure the impact on how many of these factors they put into their life as to the longevity of their life. It's a classic study referred to many times. 
number one cause of death, the biggest impact was smoking. So they, if you didn't smoke, you had a, a big impact towards longevity. Getting sleep, number two, number two. Wouldn't you imagine that that would be the second? Caught you by surprise, caught me by surprise. Third, eating breakfast regularly. That's really important. We'll look at that in a second. Why? Uh, number four, eating, no eating in between meals. A little further down, but still important. They made the top seven. Maintaining proper weight. Yes, if you have more weight, the more weight you carry, the more likely to have high blood pressure, and that sets you up for strokes and other issues. Uh, next is uh, exercise regularly. That's really important to help level off some of the blood sugar spikes after you eat a meal. If you just go for a five or 10 minute walk, it helps to round that insulin production out. Moderate or no use of alcohol. Actually, no use of alcohol because you get Reservatrol, which is a phytochemical to help fight cancers and different kinds of disease. Not from the alcohol that is in wine. French studies tout wine and how much it adds to your health. Uh, actually, it's not the alcohol. It's the grape. It's the grape with its Reservatrol uh, to help naturally fight that. So take a look at men. Now, this is not fair. I'm going to just tell you straight out, this is not fair for guys, but we're going to tell it like it is. So we look at the number of health habits practiced and how many, what the percentage of the population was dead in nine years. Those who practice all seven health habits of guys, all seven habits, only 5.5% uh, of the male population in this 20-year study died during that time. That's pretty low. What if they only practice six? 11% died. Look at that. So if you don't do all seven, you're risking twice as likely of dying sooner than you need to. Uh, what about if you'd had less healthy habits? Five healthy habits, you can see that the number of uh, percentage dies as you have less and less. Let's go down to zero to three. What if you just only had three? That you're, the percentage of people who only had three healthy lifestyle uh, choice habits only three, they were 20% of them died. Put that up against those who kept all seven healthy habits, 5.5%. They were four times more likely to die, those who only had three habits, uh, good habits, or less compared to those who had all seven. So that's a powerful incentive for guys to not only just do a few healthy habits, but go all the way and do them all. So now when we look at women, on the other hand, they get a pass. Look at this. If they practice all seven, 5.3% died in that period of time, nine years. And that's close to the 5.5% of guys. So that, that one's pretty similar. But look at this. If they only do six, it doesn't double like it does for guys, the percentage that died during that time. It only goes up a few percent. Five, only another percent. When you get down to zero to three, well, guys, 20% of them died during this time. Only 12.3% of women die. I think they have a healthy, healthier immune system, which allows them to live longer than guys. So guys have to be more fastidious. They have to be more careful to put more health habits into their life than women do to have the same longevity of life. So those uh, seven factors of longevity, we looked at them. <clears throat> No smoking, sleep seven to eight hours, eat breakfast regularly, no eating between meals, maintain proper weight, exercise regularly, moderate to no use of alcohol. Let's take a look at how that impacts. So let's just say that you're a 20 year old and you only are going to do two of those healthy habits. So physiologically, your age isn't 20, your age is 34. Let's just say that you eat breakfast and let's say you do a little bit of exercise, but you're a smoker and you don't get much sleep and you eat in between meals and you drink lots of wine. Um, you are actually physiologically 34 and the average age of Americans that die is around 78. So you're moving pretty quick towards your grave if you keep living that lifestyle. But on the other hand, you can see that if you take all seven of those health habits seriously, you actually are not, subtract 9.4 from 20, you are 11.6 years of age. I'm sorry, 10.6 years of age. You are half your, half of your age physiologically. That's pretty impressive, right? Everybody who's 20 years old would love to have a 10-year-old body, right? Because that means you're going to live longer. You've got a healthy life going for you. 
Same thing at age 30, you can see that if you only have a couple health habits, you add years to your life. Let's go down to, what if you're, what if you're in your 70s and stuff like that? All right, so if you're 70 and you only have the zero to two, um, zero to two healthy habits, your physiological age is actually 97. In other words, you're gonna die at any moment. You've already outlived what you should have lived uh, because of your health habits being so few. On the other hand, if you're practicing all seven health habits, at 70, you subtract 18.2, and you're down to 51.8 years of age, physiologically. You're 70 on the outside chronologically, but on the inside physiologically, you are only 51 years of age. So you can see how lifestyle makes a huge difference towards longevity. So we look at the mortality risk for men. What are the biggest factors? Number one, for men, for men, biggest factor on shortening, shortening your life, smoking. Smoking is the number one factor. So you do not want to be a smoker. That's the first thing you want to give up. Secondly, less than six hours or more than nine hours of sleep. Lacking that is a big problem. We need to make sure we get to sleep and we could talk about darkening the room and having sounds of ocean and whatever else, you know, going to bed at regular time, having regular bed routines, no screen time for an hour beforehand. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do to make sure that you get the sleep that you need. The third factor, low physical activity. Low physical activity, guys need to move, they need exercise. So when those factors are addressed, the, uh, you have a longer lifespan. For women, surprise, they are different. <laughs> Say their number one problem is low physical activity. Women need to get out and move. They need to exercise. That's more important for a woman than a man. All right, and the other two are tied. Uh, smoking, they need to give up smoking. Smoking cessation is the number two thing that needs to go. Highest risk related to mortality for women is smoking. Equal to that is lack of sleep. How can eating breakfast save lives? Kind of fascinating here, by possibly reducing the risk of heart attack. Risk two to three hours after waking up is up significantly. So breakfast eaters, you can see this, clot forming potential is greatly reduced for breakfast eaters compared to those who skip. Those who skip breakfast are more likely, two and a half times more likely to have blood clotting issues that can cause heart attacks and death. So breakfast is important. We already looked at the seven half risks. What does the Surgeon General have to say about nutrition and health? He says dietary excess and imbalance causes much disease and death. As we know, diet has a vital influence on health. Absolutely it does, and that's why we try to give you these vegan, healthy recipes to add longevity to your life. Five of the top 10 killers are directly related to diet. Five of the ten, top ten. So diet, once again, very important. This includes heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, and atherosclerosis. All right, so obviously diet is important. That's why we spend so much time here in the kitchen. Excessive alcohol intake is associated with three of the remaining top ten leading causes of death. What are those that are included in that? Cirrhosis of the liver. Secondly, accidents. Accidents, I remember when I was in Montana, 70% of accidents, either one or the other driver were under the influence of alcohol or both of them, 70% of the time. That is major, uh, a, you can so quickly, by not drinking, avoid that problem. And thirdly, suicide. Suicide rates up, people who drink alcohol a lot are more likely to be depressed and it's easier for them to pull the trigger as it were. So dietary excesses or imbalance contribute to high blood pressure, obesity, dental disease, osteoporosis, gastrointestinal diseases. Summary, it is clear that diet contributes to substantial ways to the development of these diseases. And that modification of diet can contribute to their prevention and their control Surgeon General says. So what about exercise and death rates per 10,000 man years? I'm talking about fit versus unfit. Let's take a look. For those who were unfit, there was 122 
deaths per 10,000 man years. For those who were fit, there was only 40 deaths per 10,000 man years. You can see that being unfit is three times the risk, 300% the risk of dying compared to those who are fit. Should be motivation for us to get fit. But if you have been unfit, you can still turn the corner because by getting on a healthy exercise program and eating nutritionally uh, well-balanced meals, you can go from 122 deaths per 10,000 man years to 68. You can basically half the risk. Even though you had a bad lifestyle in the past, by turning the corner, you can cut your risk in half. That is good news. What about individuals with strong religious faith? Higher levels of life satisfaction are theirs. Higher levels of life satisfaction, they found greater personal happiness. I totally believe that. Fewer negative psychological, psychosocial consequences of traumatic life events. So we'll close out with a couple texts here. Exodus 15 says, he, and, and said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and will do what is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. What a beautiful promise and a little incentive for us to take care of our body temple. All right, so I want to thank you for tuning in, and we'll turn it back over to Chef and Emily as they wrap it up. Hi, buddy. Hey, we have a lot of fun put staging everything now. Okay, <laughs> what should we show them first? Okay, this is a cheesecake. The yeah, start. It's a pumpkin cheesecake. Always start with dessert first. Yes, yeah, so we'll start with dessert. Short. And this is uh, <laughs> Cheerios. Uh, not Cheerios, Oreos. <laughs> Oreos, uh, Oreos pancake. Um, a cheesecake, okay? Pumpkin, <laughs> not pancake. Oreos. <laughs> it's an Oreo cheesecake. Oreos we're cheesecake. Good. Yes, pumpkin <laughs> cheesecake. I like okay. pancakes for supper yes. too, but oh yeah, I love pancake, but now it's cheesecake. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's let's design the whole thing. And this is actually the mm -hmm. Portabella Wellington. It's beautiful. You see the texture. The it's the course is perfect. And this is what we want. Mm. Okay. Yum. Yeah. So let's stage these things nicely, just like I'm going to put a sauce first here. Ah, the cranberry. You should have the cranberry. Ah. Mm. You can check the spoon there and just pu pull it in these things there so as you can see. In here? Yes, okay. Excellent. So I'm going to cut this into two, just like that. You see this inside? How oh, beautiful. Wow, that looks amazing. <laughs> and then I'm going to put it over the, the gravy like this, okay? The portabella dressing. Just like that. Oh, it smells so and good. And we have some fingerling. So just one or two fingerling, just like that. What do you think, Emily, so far? I mean, not only does it look amazing, but it smells so delicious. Yes. My mouth is watering. And then some broccolini. Broccolini are just like the texture and it's crunchy. It doesn't, it's just of uh we we steam it for just a few minutes two yeah like two, two minutes, minutes. yes mm -hmm. that's it yeah <coughs> it's just fancy it too you fancy, know like you for know? a special yes. meal it does this taste really good but it and looks good too <laughs> and now and with this together that's great and now let's put this cheesecake the pumpkin cheesecake so let's get into i'm glad you said it was oreo because we did not burn the crust <laughs> yes we did yeah we didn't burn the crust <laughs> like a charcoal yes. crust <laughs> a charcoal crust no i would not eat it will you eat it no okay this is what we did uh, anyway okay now let us know what kind of crust you try are you going to go for graham cracker or oreo or something else Oh! <laughs> well, this is life. It's okay, eh? upside Let's down. A down, a oh. down cheesecake. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just like this. Let me wipe it up a little bit. Oh, I just. Oh, I like I like the the last the last thing you did. Like put the chocolate crumb on top. On top. Yeah, mm -hmm. just like that. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Just Beautiful. <laughs> just make it look like we planned it that way. Like <laughs> like <Yes>. art. No. <laughs> we did. Do you put on top? Yes, you can put some on top. Put on top. 
I don't know. Beautiful. <laughs> and this is what we have. Mm. Our cheesecake. And also this beautiful Portabella Wellington with fingerling potatoes and uh, broccolini. And also a cranberry sauce and a cheesecake. Oh, I forgot the last things just like this. Wow, and we're done. And a pinch of smoked paprika. Oh, it's like it. Christmas. Uh, I yes. mean, the colors. <laughs> yes. It's just so fancy. Okay, so we're done. It is done. So, um, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, please let, let us know. And uh, we have a Q&A, correct? We have a Q&A. Just a couple things to announce real quick before we get to that. Um, so, our next session is going to be on December 7th. December 7th. Again, we're still in the holiday season, so we're going to do something awesome related to Christmas. So, on our <laughs> agenda uh, of recipes oh. is we're going to have a cherry mousse pie. We're going to have a nut loaf with different layers. We call it triple phyllo pecan pie. Not really sure that is, but uh, Chef will be able to say something about that. Braised Brussels sprouts and chocolate mocha. So those are some things we have on the agenda to share recipes with you and uh, have a great time. Um, something else, Chef? Tell us about the little story you guys have here. And uh, then we got something else after that to ask you about. Yeah, just so we talk a little bit about it. But uh, from mo Sunday to Monday, we are open. Uh, Sunday to, uh, um, I can't tell, it's a long day. Friday, <laughs> Sunday to Friday. Close Monday. Close Monday, yes. Close Monday and Saturday. On Sabbath, we are closed also. So come join us there. We have plenty of items. Those items, if you can find, we have it. All those, that we, all, all those items that we use today, mm -hmm. we have it in the store. And so please come see us. And uh, we'll be... And Tuesday fresh bread, Wednesday fresh tamales, <laughs> Thursday pizza, and we have all kind of pastries and dessert pie and all kind of things. Okay? <laughs> yes. All right. So now you started something else new. That it's the class is already filled up, but uh, you're doing something yes. exciting. Tell us about this exciting new class that you're <gasps> teaching. Okay. So we have hands-on cooking classes also. Uh, the, uh, it's already full. So, but we have another one in December coming up. Uh, we take only only eight people. Uh, maximum eight people so it's hands-on mm -hmm. with me in the kitchen and uh, that's why I want a small group so we can have a, a better and um, better teaching so that's mm -hmm. why about it's um, it's all plant based and we're going to have fun in the kitchen and you're going to take everything that you cook you can go home with it you know Ooh. awesome yeah. I did <laughs> really good yes I did one of those down in Tennessee <laughs> those classes and uh, if you're in an office, you should invite your office mates to come with you and do something fun together like yeah. that or bring your spouse or some f yes. friends, uh, some girlfriends that might really enjoy cooking. It's a great experience to just share the moments and uh, learn some healthy uh, skills. Yeah, it well. is true. You can, bring your, uh, you can do a group event like a five lady eight, uh, woman uh, ministry can come, like eight people and, uh, or husband and wife or the candlelight dinner, the husband treat their wife and... Uh, and we do a kind of like dinner, five course dinner there, hands on. Such yeah. a great, great time. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yes. As we are, again, the date for next time is December 7th. Uh, as we wrap out, before we turn it over to Q&A, there's something we always say as we finish our show. Yeah, what is that, Chef? Eat better, live well. Eat better, live well. All right. Or so eat healthy, live well. If you got some <laughs> Q&A to send our way, go ahead and send it to, uh, and Samuel will pick it up and tell us what might be um, the questions. So do we got any questions, Samuel? Okay. All right. After we do the credits, then we'll come around to that. Meanwhile, we're just going to try and get a few bites here yes. and taste this food. So <laughs> just watch this and, uh, and just think how good it really yeah. tastes.
yeah. it's like perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I know. This is the theme. What the, the fingerling the with the, the cranberry sauce? Yes. Oh. Testing. Okay, so this end. we are going to do our Q&A now. <coughs> And that means what you can do is you can send in your questions to us in the comments or the chat, whichever mm -hmm. is, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, send it in the chat. If you're watching okay, on yeah, Facebook, yeah. just send it in the comments. And we will see Enjoy. your question, and we're going to answer each one of them as time allows. So we are... The cheesecake. We got a couple of questions already. I hope it's ready. If the recipes will be posted. The, rep <laughs> the recipes will be posted on our website, www.camp.com. Cuisine.org. They're already there. <laughs> if you need them, they're already there. You do that? And you can look for them. They're under. Uh, I'm off huh? camera. Wow. The they're under the good, website. Huh? The recipes. You try to see. That's good. <laughs> good. Okay, you can, uh, and you can you can find them there. We're going to be Take putting pictures thing. of it, and we'll be putting on we the Facebook page. Mm. So all of that will be there for you to look at. So our first question comes from Diana. <laughs> she <laughs> says, is it better to buy the crust or make your own to uh. wrap the mushrooms in? Okay, uh, to grab the mushroom, it, the crust does take a long time. Uh, this is, I make my own crust many times, uh, but uh, I will recommend you to, uh, uh, it, it's a process, a very difficult crust yeah. to make. Uh, if, you, if, you are, uh, um, if you love baking, then mm. you will not have too much problem, but you have to do some research. I take about 45 minutes to make, 45 minutes to, uh, more than 45 minutes, about three hours to make this pipe puff crust. But you can use otherwise a, a pastry crust uh, instead of a puff crust, and it will be the same thing. It will not be as f uh, flaky, but it will do the same thing. I will use a pastry crust instead. Um, but uh, trying a puff crust at home, if it's the first time, you c it can be very challenging. So, Marlene wants to know, who does Nature's Nest and what days are they open again? Okay, Nature's Nest. Okay, uh, do you, do you want, okay. from Sunday to Friday, uh, Sunday um, 10 to 2 on Sunday, and Friday uh, is uh, 10 to 2 also, but uh, Monday is closed. Tuesday to Wednesday is uh, 10 to 5, and Thursday until 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Very good. Okay. So... Yeah. Continue to send in your questions. They're going to try some food. It's really good. They have broccoli. Yes, we try. Um, <laughs> look at it. It finished all cheesecake. It just goes. It's can't really stop eating it. <laughs> 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 really good. Really good. This is clean. You can't take them. One? Yeah. I really want to try that. Yeah, go ahead. Let me cut it. Is that okay? Yeah. So pretty. Mm. Okay. So and put some sauce here. Yeah. Wow. Very good. Thank okay. You. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anna asks, can you please add serving sizes to the recipes? It would make it easier to calculate nutritional information. Ah, serving sizes. There is serving sizes, uh, like a tablespoon cups measurement. Is what she's saying? Mm. I think she means the. How um, many people it'll feed? How many people? Like, like ah, how many people? Okay, I will work on like, that. Like, like portions. Okay, I will work on that. Uh, thank okay. you. Good questions, and we'll we get make back sure to you on this. that. Yes. And. Stanley asks, is Samuel going to bring me home an apple pie? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, the apple pie, we have apple pie uh, in the store. <laughs> but not if you here. want apple pie, you can come up to the store and buy <laughs> yeah. They just did it today. Yeah, we did it today and it's <laughs> excellent. It just goes so fast as mm. someone put it there. So, yeah. So You like it? <laughs> so, Making a mess. more questions. <laughs> Do you have a favorite <laughs> holiday punch or drink that you enjoy yes. making? Actually, uh, I was planning to make it uh, probably for c during Christmas. Um, next next cooking class, we will do it. Mm. Okay? Yes. Yeah. It was on our schedule to do wassail, I think it's called. Yeah. And it, it's, it's like apple cider yeah. and a lot so of, yes, we're going to of do good it. ingredients. And then uh, it got forgotten or something. <laughs> yes. it, we were hey, we have a it. lot. <laughs> <laughs> to me. We have time for so much. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Mm. So, Diana asks, do you take the orange peel out of the cranberries before, and it got cut off right after I was reading it, mm. do you take the orange peel out of the cranberries before you serve it, or can you have it in there? No, I, I, I like authenticity. I like people realize this is not a, uh, a can 
cranberry sauce. So therefore, I leave everything there: the cinnamon stick and the the cranberry sauce. Uh, even the, the star. Even the star anise mm -hmm. is still there. Mm -hmm. Everything and the flavor also develop as you leave it there. We get more and more um, marinated to, with uh, uh, the cranberry with the lemon and everything. We marinate well, so I will leave it and serve it just like that. Yeah, and it's interesting. P you, people will ask questions. It's a good way to inter interact and, and tell them what you do and why you leave it. Mm -hmm. So Cami asks, how do I order pizza and when is pickup? Okay, pizza, mm. uh, pick, uh, order it. Uh, I will recommend to do it on Friday, on Wednesday or Thursday morning. Uh, just call us. Uh, I've, I don't have a number in mind, but um, uh, just call us and uh, then ch we have a list of pizza that we post uh, continually on our uh, camp cuisine on Facebook so you can see the list um, mm -hmm. we have Hawaiian pizza we have beef and onion pizza we have meat lover mm -hmm. pizza we have Mediterranean pizza mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which one? Mm -hmm. sorry the meat lovers it has all vegetarian yeah right? yeah the meat lover are all vegetarian all vegetarian, all vegetarian mm -hmm. okay so uh, yeah we call us in advance and uh, order your pizza and we'll be very glad to uh, it will take about 15 minutes, 12, 15 minutes, yeah, 15 minutes to make your pizza, okay, 15, 20 minutes. And he's not joking when he says it's good. Yeah. It's a very good pizza. Yeah. You, yeah. you will not, you, you will want to come back and buy more. Yeah. It's very good. And it's all <laughs> plant-based, so it's really great, yes. Mm. So Jane asked, I missed some of the program. Are all the recipes vegan? They are all vegan and plant-based. Mm, Yes, they are vegan and plant-based, mm -hmm. and so uh, if you missed some of the recipes, there is, uh, you can go for video one, it's all recorded on YouTube, so you can go there. Mm -hmm. So Diana asks, will the mushroom that's covered in the pastry be too dry if you put a stuffing mix in it, like a cornbread stuffing? Mm -hmm. uh, the cornbread stuffing, no, actually, it can be like, a, I will not put it in, a, she want the mushroom and the, the stuffing in the mushroom. I think so. That's a good idea. Actually, I, I don't. I think it'd be a great match as long as you have a, a good gravy for it. I think it's fine. I say go ahead and try it, and let me know what what come out from this. And uh, I will be, I'll be willing to try. Yes. So Lori asks, please remind me of the non-dairy milk that you love using for gravies. Ah yes, this is the soy barista. This is incredible for gravy. Literally, this is my favorite one. This is the one that I love to use. And uh, I will. We have it here at the uh, Nature's Nest, and I will. I, I really highly recommend this one. Okay, it's a plain, plain original uh, soy barista. Okay, and Tammy asks, or Tammy says, your site does not come up. And if it's not coming up, keep trying. Yeah. It, if you need, uh, I'm going to repeat the link. It's www.campcuisine.org, and mm -hmm. Some people might say, oh, it's .com, but it's .org. And it's, if you need help looking for it, you can go and you can search Camp Cuisine you know on that? Google. Okay. Camp Cuisine Chef There's Miguel Larche. It's spelled Larcher, by the way. And it'll come up. <laughs> it'll, it'll all be there. And you can find all the recipes and everything. Mm. Yeah. So do you have anything else to add, Pastor Benson? <laughs> Just eating. Anything, so anything about the cheesecake? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I feel like I'm at a five star the restaurant cranberry. right here. It is so amazing. Mm -hmm. you, and do you, you like the cranberry sauce? sauce? The you cranberry sauce? sauce, how do you find it? It's the cranberry sauce. The cranberry sauce is killer or delicious. Yeah. I, I have never <laughs> tasted better. That is the best. Awesome. So, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, you get on a two, You know, if you enjoy the show, please tell others about it and uh, share the, the wisdom. Again, they can watch it, they, they can go get the recipe, buy the ingredients, and they can watch it at home. It's going to be archived, so you, you can catch it mm. all along. So. And this is the, the final, the finally, uh, the final, uh, how do you say? Cheesecake. Cheesecake? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is what it turned out after 30 minutes. Beautiful. Awesome. <laughs> and we'll let it chill for about uh, overnight. I love to use the cheesecake overnight. Uh, I'll cook it overnight for the next day. I will not cook my cheesecake the same day and eat it the same day. So it's best to do it overnight. Okay. Mm. All right. No more questions. Do you have nope. I don't have any more questions. This is last call for questions. <laughs> um, and I know some of you are saying you're having problems with the website, and I know Lori po posted it on the comments. And if you're not able to get to it now, have no fear. We will be posting the websites on our Facebook page. Uh, 
probably tonight or tomorrow. Probably not tonight. It's late. <laughs> yes, <it's> getting late. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you will be able to find all of that. There'll be a link there for you to you to use. And so just check back here. Share this with your friends. Share it on your Facebook page. Uh, we we love our viewers. And if you have any suggestions, send us a Facebook message. Say we'd love for you to make. Whatever I know, we've yeah, taken a yeah. few suggestions, yes, and, yeah. and we love suggestions. I know someone asked for lasagna, so we had to, yeah, coming. Send us pictures. If you <laughs> end up making this at home, send yeah. us pictures, yeah. and uh, I know Chef will love that, and yes. we might even show it on the program here. You never yes. know. Yes. So I think that's it. Is that it? So also, um, if you try this and you have guests over for Thanksgiving, tell us what their responses are. Do they enjoy it? Uh, do they like it? So anyway, we just love to feed. We love to hear feedback. We kind of know you're out there, but we really welcome feedback. We look for it because it encourages us to keep on doing things in the direction that you guys would like to mm. to receive the instruction, and it is a blessing for us. So, but that said, I'm just going to say uh, good night. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next month. And um, 